The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday in Advent is from Malachi chapter 4. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stoned. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I ask, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and just decrees that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children, the hearts of children to their fathers lest I come and strike the land with the decree of utter destruction. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Romans chapter 15. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance, through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. Again it is said, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples extol him. And again Isaiah says, The roots of Jesse will come, even he who arises to the Gentiles, in him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. Jesus said, There will be signs in sun and moon and stars, and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out in the you see for yourselves and know that summer is already here. So also, when you see these things, 
taking place, we know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, that and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place, to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. <coughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ our Lord has made known and promised, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall surely not pass away. How shall you respond to this word of Christ? Are you taking it seriously? Are you acting in accordance with it? Are you taking it to heart? Are you confident that just as he has spoken, so it shall be? Do you trust Christ's word and promise? Or do his words seem foolish to your ears, like the ravings of some deranged lunatic out of his mind? Are you sneering at such outrageous predictions and self-delusional proclamations? Is Jesus simply a fool to be laughed at and then ignored for far more important matters at hand? Still yet, do his words ring with deceit in your ears? The grand lies of a master liar spun to ensnare and entrap those foolish enough to take them seriously. You see, there are only three reasonable reactions to Christ and to his word. He is either you, your Lord and you trust his word, or he is a lunatic and his word can simply be forgotten. Or still the third, he is a liar, and his word is to be opposed. The Pharisees, Sadducees, and the elders of the Jewish ruling council took Jesus to be a liar and a blasphemer. They were convinced that Jesus spoke and acted by the power of the devil. They were certain that Jesus' words would, make, would bring trouble and ruin upon the Jewish people. They were certain that this trouble would come upon them from Rome. And thus, they plotted against Jesus. They drummed up false charges against him and put political pressure upon Pilate to have him crucified. They wanted Jesus' words to pass away, and thus they killed him. The Romans and the rest of the Gentile world took Jesus for a lunatic. Pilate could not understand Jesus' silence in the face of his accusers. He knew Jesus was not a criminal worthy of death, and yet Jesus seemed to welcome his very own <laughs> destruction. He was confounded by Jesus' claim to a reign in a kingship that is not of this world. <coughs> so Pilate
Pilate had Jesus mocked and scourged, hoping by this to pacify the demands of the Jewish rulers. He didn't really want to kill Jesus because he indeed knew he was innocent of all the charges brought against him. Yet in the end, when pressed, Pilate gave in gave the order of execution for the loony Christ that was brought before him. The first disciples of Jesus had come to believe that, Jesus, that the words of Jesus were the very words of God himself. Jesus' words spoke truth concerning the condition and state of the world of the people of Israel and the Gentiles and themselves personally. Jesus had called them and countless others to repentance by preaching the good news of God's reign that had come in him. Jesus extended God's mercy to sinners. He forgave them. He taught the Holy Scripture is with authority like no one else. He cast out demons. He healed the sick. And he even brought the dead back to life. And he did this all by his word. The disciples had come to believe that he was the one promised to redeem Israel to be a light to all the nations. They confessed Jesus to be the Christ of God, the Son of the Most High, the one who is blessed, who comes in the name of the Lord. Every word of Jesus, or every word that Jesus spoke to them, the disciples clung to. Thus, when Jesus referred to himself as the Son of Man coming in a cloud with glory and power, they believed that he was the one promised in Daniel chapter 7. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven there came one like a Son of Man. And he came to the Ancient of Days, and was presented before him, and to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His domain, his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. But then, shortly after Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words shall surely not pass away, Jesus passed away into death and was laid in a tomb. The disciples Mourned. Their hope was crushed. Their faith was undone. Yet Jesus' words still did not pass away. You see, before Jesus passed away into death, he told his disciples that it was necessary for him to be rejected to be killed, and on the third day be, to be raised from the dead in order to redeem Israel, the Gentiles, and all the world. Jesus' word remained certain and true even when he died, even when his disciples forgot his word and promises and did not believe them. For just as Jesus said, he passed from death into resurrection life. 
In his resurrection, Jesus appeared to those very same disciples who believed and hoped in him and fell away. And he came to them and he spoke words of peace and forgiveness to restore them and reestablish them in faith. He opened the very scriptures to them that they might understand how everything written in them gave witness to him. And then Jesus sent these same disciples into all the world to be his witnesses, to proclaim his word to all the nations, to preach repentance and the forgiveness of sins in his name. And just as Jesus said, so the first disciples did and have done. So that even you and I and countless other people have heard the very words of Jesus today. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall surely not pass away. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the end is ever drawing near. The day of judgment is indeed at hand. Everything in this world and this age shall indeed pass away. It is all temporary. Everything that seems firm and unshakable will be shaken and fall. All the powers and the rulers of this earth will crumble and come to nothing. All evildoers, the wicked, the unrighteous, who care only for themselves and whose hearts are drunken with lust and the cares of this world shall die and meet their eternal doom. The day of judgment draws near, and yet this is not to be a day of fear for any of you. For indeed, each one of you belongs to Christ Jesus himself, for you have received his very name and promise in holy baptism. You have been baptized into his death and resurrection, and so are children of God, dear disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Christ wants you to welcome the day of the Lord, that day of judgment, with joy and with gladness. For it is indeed the day in which your hope shall be fulfilled. Christ says, Now when these things begin to happen, stand up and raise your heads. Therefore your redemption is drawing near. But keep watch in every season by praying that you might overcome to escape all these things which are about to happen to stand before the Son of Man. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we have heard from St. Paul today in Romans that everything in the Scriptures has been written for you, for your encouragement in Christ, that you might be built up in faith and a certain hope. Christ is your Lord and God, and though all the heavens and the earth will pass away, his words shall surely never pass away. And the words of Christ Jesus, your Lord, have been spoken for your benefit. They are filled with promise. Promise today of the forgiveness of all of your sins. <coughs> It doesn't matter what you have done. You have forgiveness for all of it in Christ. He is your righteousness, the one who has laid his life down for you. He 
has suffered the wrath and eternal judgment of God in his own body when he hung and bled and died for you on the cross. Judgment day has come ahead of time in Christ that you might escape the wrath of God and be given God's mercy. The word of the Lord has come to you that you might fear, believe, and trust in God, the crucified and risen one, with all your heart, mind, and strength. Indeed, this is why you and I have gathered this day for our crucified, risen, ascended, and soon returning Lord has come to meet you and I here to speak his words of promise, to forgive you and I our sins, to prepare us for his second coming in a day and an hour when we do not expect or know. But be certain that day is drawing ever near. And it is the day of your redemption. The day for you and I to welcome, for judgment has come ahead of time. And in Christ, you and I are righteous, and you and I are forgiven. So let us hold fast to the words of Christ that shall never pass away. Let us come rejoicing to his altar and receive his very body and blood given and shed for the forgiveness of your sins. You see, dear brothers in Christ, sisters in Christ, this is part of the feast that shall never end, a feast that will continue in the resurrection unending. Heaven and earth, they shall certainly pass away, but the word of Christ Jesus shall certainly never pass away. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus until his return.